In today's video you're gonna learn how to create a dope animation. Alright, so for starters, let me just show you the comp settings, 1080 by 1920, I'm gonna hit OK. So I prepared only one asset for today, which is a car, and you're gonna be able to download the exact same car in the description below. This is from freepick.com, which is a pretty cool page, and also you get some free downloads there. It's not an ad. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna scale it down, probably to something like that, and then we're gonna go ahead and add tint effect to this. So now I'm gonna right click, go to pre-compose, and we're gonna make sure this circle is selected, and then I'm just gonna rename it to car. Let's hit enter. Alright, so we're gonna start with the scale, so I'm gonna hit S, and I'm gonna create a keyframe for scale, move it forward, couple frames, and then I'm gonna change it to 0% in the beginning. So in order to add that bounce over here, we need to make sure to hold alt and click on the stopwatch. Here you need to paste the expression, which I left for you in the comment below. So just go to the comment section and grab it and paste it here, then click away, and that way we got something like that. And then I'm gonna probably go into that car and just scale it down a bit. I feel like it should be smaller. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is create a rectangle in the background. So for this, I'm gonna make sure to go to the rounded rectangle tool. With nothing selected, I'm gonna create a shape like that. Let's recenter, and I'm gonna make sure it's set to solid color. Here we're gonna change it to white. Let's hit OK. And we're gonna replace the order. Here I'm gonna rename it to car BG. And right off the bat, I'm gonna make sure that we're in the mode over here, you can press F4, and we're gonna change the track mode in our car to car background. It's gotten disabled, so enable it again. And here what we're gonna do is create a keyframe for size, then I'm also gonna create a keyframe for position. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna make sure that the size is set to zero over here, and we're gonna take that position to the left corner of the rectangle. So it's gonna get that revealing effect. Okay, pretty cool. All we need to do is just select them all, hit F9 in order to ease ease, and we're gonna go to the graph editor, and here what you wanna do is just create a peak on the left. Okay, it's very sharp, so let's extend it. Okay, I like it. I'm gonna probably just squeeze that peak even more towards the left. Okay, pretty good. Also, if you want to adjust that bouncing effect, you can always just extend the keyframes. It's just gonna be more subtle. Probably that way it's better. All right, so now we need to create a road for this car. So we're just gonna be adding some lines. So for this, I'm gonna make sure to grab the pen tool and I'm gonna create a point here, then hold shift. And we're gonna create another one over here. Now what you can do is just recenter the whole line and we're gonna make sure to disable the fill color and we're gonna turn on the stroke. Here we're gonna go to the stroke color and I'm gonna change it to that hex code. So click OK and I'm gonna rename it to vertical road. Okay, then we're gonna put it below the car. Okay, so now go to the mode and do the same for the vertical road. So we're just gonna set it to car PG. So that way it's just gonna stay within that rectangle. Also, that road is a bit too thin, so we're just gonna go ahead and change it to 40, maybe even 45, and this should be perfect. Now we need to create more roads, and there are gonna be horizontal ones. So we're gonna start off with grabbing the pen tool again, and I'm just gonna create a keyframe here, actually a point here, I'm gonna hold shift and create another one on the right. Okay, here, these horizontal roads should be a bit smaller. So for this, I'm gonna set it to provide 20. And then I'm gonna go ahead and extend it a bit so it goes beyond that rectangle. And it's quite important to create that road over here because we're gonna be using repeater effect. So let's open up properties here, go to add, repeater, open it up. And we're gonna change the copies to 12. And then if you go to transform repeater one, you can set X position to zero and then we're gonna bump up Y position. Okay, as you can notice, it's gonna give us more roads. And then all we need to do is just rename it to horizontal roads and drop it below our vertical road. And also one more thing, we need to change the track map to car BG. Okay, so now everything stays within the rectangle, but also in order to add a little bit of movement to this, so we're kind of imitating the car driving, we would need to add position keyframes to the horizontal roads. So what I'm gonna do, is actually create a keyframe for positioning in the beginning. Then we can actually go higher with this. Probably something like that should be fine. Then I'm gonna go forward. And then what I'm gonna do is just drag it across like that. So it's looking like the car is driving through these roads and we can actually make it faster by playing around with that last keyframe. Probably better. The next step would be kind of revealing these roads. So for this, I'm just gonna make sure to select them both, hit Alt Shift T, and that way we just created opacity keyframes, then move back and change it to 0%. Okay, so we're gonna get that effect. 
but it's kind of boring. So what we need to do in order to make it more interesting, we're gonna create a circle that will expand from this car. So let's go ahead and grab the ellipse tool and we're just gonna create a circle right in the middle, just like so. We can put it below our car and let's rename it to circle. And what I'm gonna do is change it to black color. Let's hit okay. Then we're gonna create a keyframe for size. Let's move forward and we're just gonna bump it up like that. Okay, so that way we're gonna get that effect and we wanna bump up the stroke width to make it more impactful. Let's see now. I can already tell that we need to change the size over here to zero. And then we can just for the safety measures, bump it up a bit more. Then we're gonna grab these two keyframes and move them over here. So it's matching the timing. Let's see now. What I'm gonna do though, is just select them both, hit F9 and go to the graph editor. Here, I'm just gonna create a peak on the left. We kind of wanna have that impact in the beginning, just like so, probably too strong. Yeah, better. And then let's make sure it has a perfect timing. Okay, so this is gonna be our first layer. I'm just gonna bump up the roundness a bit. And yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. So let's select all layers and we're gonna turn it into one by pre-composing. So let's call it car all. And now that's where it gets fun. We're gonna start playing around with the camera. So for this, I'm gonna right click, go to new camera. And here you wanna pick a 35 millimeter preset, also the type to note camera and I'm gonna hit okay. Then let's drop it below. And then right away, I'm gonna create a new new object and this is gonna be our camera controller. I can also rename it. And then I'm gonna parent the camera to the null. So that way, whenever we move this, it's gonna also move the whole thing. Also for clarity, I'm gonna select both and just change the color. And what you could do, actually what you have to do is turn on the 3D over here. Okay, so whenever we got that impact over here and the roads show up, I kinda wanna create a movement. So what I'm gonna do is select cam control one, then hit alt shift P in order to create a keyframe for position. And then I'm gonna hit alt shift R. That way all the rotation values were keyframed. I'm just gonna delete orientation and we can double click U. Here's the moment where the roads are showing up. So what I'm gonna do is just have the keyframes over here and we're gonna move backwards with this just like so. And then we're gonna start playing around with X. Okay, pretty cool. Also with a little bit of Z maybe a bit of Y. This is already starting to look really nice. I'm just gonna probably pull it back by changing Z position. Let's play around with X a bit more. So that's what we have so far. And we also need to apply mid graph over here. So essentially just add the peak in the middle to all of them. I'm just gonna have that peak right where the circle expands over here. Okay, little adjustment. I feel like I went a bit too far. Tweaking the keyframes is probably one of the most important things and you will spend a lot of time on this. Okay, so here we need to add another object in order to make it feel more 3D because if you have only one, then it doesn't really make the difference. So here what I'm gonna do is just head over to Motion Essence and I'm gonna grab Pin Icon. Let's grab it and put it on the timeline. So this is animated and you don't really need to have it like that. You can just grab Emoji Pin and this is gonna be working fine as well. So I'm gonna just turn it into 3D, but first let me just recenter. Then I'm gonna move it forward with Y position, just like so. And then I'm gonna click R on the keyboard and we're gonna play around with X. Okay, with that animation, it looks better. And then what I'm gonna do is probably just drag it to the left and I'm gonna add the text on the right hand side. So let's hit Control T or just grab the type tool. And I'm gonna type in New York and then I'm gonna turn it into 3D as well. And I'm gonna make sure that New York has the same transform as pin. So I'm gonna click this, hit Control C, and then Control V. Okay, so it landed here. The anchor point is a bit off, so I'm just gonna recenter the anchor point and then move it to the right. And let me just use the values over here. I'm gonna probably do it like that. Let's drag it right next to our pin. We can bump up the size. Just to make it more interesting, right off the bottom, I'm gonna add an animation to the text. So let's go ahead and grab something from Motion Boost. So I'm gonna probably trim it here and then I'm gonna use MB Smooth Up. We just need to time it properly. Actually, this timing is pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at that and you can use any animation you have, anything you prefer. Okay, so now we need another movement which is gonna be starting somewhere here when the New York is finishing the animation. So I'm gonna go at this position to our car all 
and here I'm gonna hit you and I'm gonna take these keyframes for opacity, copy them, paste them and then hit Alt R. So that way you just went to keyframe assistant and time reversed keyframes. Okay, so that road is gonna disappear around this time. So when the roads are disappearing, we need to use the text. So I'm just gonna grab the type tool and let me just type in 10 minutes left. Then what I'm gonna do is just recenter the whole thing, hit R and I'm gonna set rotation to minus 90. We're gonna scale it down and put it right on the left side of the car. Maybe I went overboard with this. And the reason we're doing it like that, which is looking kind of weird, is because if we go to the animation, we're gonna be rotating the camera so the text is gonna be on top of our screen. So actually we can do it now. So I'm gonna hit you for our cam control one. And then here, we're just gonna play around with Z position, then with Y rotation, then with X. And we need to make sure that that text is gonna be somewhere here. So even more Z, even more Y. Okay, this is getting pretty hard. Okay, so here as well, I'm gonna apply mid graph and let's see what we got. I'm gonna probably extend it for a slower movement. And I feel like I wanna have more of a top view. So let me just play around with this. Okay, again, I'm gonna make sure to apply mid graph. And then around this time when we got the peak in the middle, I'm gonna go back to our car all. And here I'm gonna apply another text animation, which is gonna be something from motion plus as well. MB06 blink. All right, let's go back and let's see. Okay, I feel like we need to make it a bit earlier. So I'm just gonna move it backwards. Pretty much perfect. One thing I would do is just offset these keyframes. Let's go back and see. Okay, and then we need the last movement, which is gonna be bringing us back to the original position. So I'm just gonna click on the cam control one, hit you, and I'm gonna actually select these keyframes in the beginning copy and paste them here. Okay, then we need to make sure to apply the mid graph. And when it's happening, we need to go back to the car. So make sure that the time indicator is here on these keyframes. I'm gonna click on the car all. And now we know that from this position, we need to start another movement. So I'm gonna actually hide everything. And here in the car background, I'm gonna keyframe size. We can also uncheck constraint proportions. Then I'm gonna keyframe roundness. We also need position for the car, and we need position for the text. Okay, so what we need to do is just remove that car over here. So I'm gonna select it, and it's just gonna drive away. And then that text is gonna go probably to the left like that. Also, we can make sure that it stays within the frame. So just change the track map to car BG. And that way we got that movement. And then what I'm gonna do next is just decrease the size like that. Also, I'm gonna bump up the roundness. So now we need the final text, which is gonna be right here. So make sure to grab the type tool and I'm gonna type in enjoy, hit enter, your enter, right. Okay, I'm gonna recenter the whole thing, scale it down. And again, we're gonna apply a movement. So I'm just gonna keyframe position, move that keyframe and align it with these. And let's just drag it lower. We can also change the track mat. So that way it's kind of looking like the car is pulling that text. So now what we need to do is make sure to select them all, apply the mid graph. I'm gonna go back to our animation and here is the final movement. So align the playhead with these keyframes, go back to the car and align the keyframes with the playhead. Okay, then you can also apply the mid graph just for safety. And let's see. Okay, my camera is running out of the memory. So I probably disappeared. So I'm gonna do one thing in order to spice it up. It's the last thing actually. So just make sure to right click here, go to new, solid, and we're gonna create a background. We're gonna call it dark PG. And I'm gonna paste that hex code. Let's hit okay. Let's hit okay again. And move it below everything. I already know this one error. Actually that circle goes beyond our shape over here. So just go back to the car all and do the same for the circle like we did for the rest. Just change the track mod to car BG. Okay, so that way it disappeared. Okay, and now we need one more background. So I'm gonna right click, go to new, solid. And here you wanna rename it to bright BG. And I'm gonna paste that hex code this time. Let's hit okay, okay again. And put it right above the dark background. 
So whenever we got that circle expanding at this moment, we need to make sure to keyframe opacity in our bright background. So let's hit Alt Shift T, move forward, and we're gonna change it to 0%. So this is an insanely good effect, I absolutely love it. So simple, but very effective. And then whenever we're moving here, we're gonna copy these keyframes, paste them here, and I'm gonna right click keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. Let's just make sure it's in the correct position. And then at this movement, we're gonna probably copy the first keyframes, paste them here, and look at that. And now as for the final touch, I'm gonna go to the camera, transform, alt click the stopwatch for point of interest, and I'm gonna type in wiggle, 1,12. Let's click away. And this is gonna give us that camera shake. We're gonna probably notice it the most when it stops. Okay, so now just to top it off, we're gonna make sure to turn on the motion blur. Let's go to the car. Here you need to make sure to press F4 and turn it on here as well. Let's go back. All right, so we're gonna leave it at that. My camera ran out of the memory, so we're not gonna have the proper outro, but hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. And yeah, make sure to check out the video on the screen and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.